Gerard David Sheen, better known as G. David Sheen or David Sheen, was the wealthy heir to a hotel chain fortune who became a central figure in the Army M. C. Carthy hearings of 1954 in his role as the chief consultant to the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations. Chapter 1 Early Years Sheen was born in Gloversville, New York to Jewish parents, hotel magnate Eunuch Meyer Sheen and Hildegarde Feldman. He attended Phillips Academy and graduated from Harvard University in 1949. He entered Harvard in the summer of 1945, took a leave of absence in the spring of 1946, and returned in the fall of 1947 after a year working as an assistant purser for the Army Transport Service. Though it was a civilian position, he wrote on his application for readmittance that he was a lieutenant in the Army, and other students resented his calling himself a veteran said one, we were all veterans and his pretending to be one went over like a lead balloon. At Harvard he lived, according to a later Harvard Crimson portrait, in a style which went out here with the era of the Gold Coast, the years before World War I when wealthy Harvard students lived apart from their classmates in private accommodations. College administrators denied his requests to use his dormitory room as an office, and to allow a female secretary to visit outside of regular visiting hours. He did, however, conduct the university band and served as its drum major. Chapter 2 – Anti-Communism and Army M. C. Carthy Hearings In 1952 Sheen published a six-page anti-communist pamphlet called Definition of Communism, and had a copy placed in every room of his family's chain of hotels. Although the pamphlet contained many errors, Time called it remarkably succinct. The pamphlet introduced Sheen to Roy Cohen through newspaper columnist George Sokolsky, and the two became friends. Cohen at that time was Senator Joseph McCarthy's chief counsel, and he brought Sheen onto McCarthy's staff as an unpaid chief consultant. McCarthy-era opponents of communism sought to stamp out material they viewed as pro-communist. Sheen and Cohen conducted a much-criticized tour of Europe in 1953, examining libraries of the United States Information Agency for books written by authors they deemed to be communists or fellow travelers. Die Welt of Hamburg called them Schuffler or Snoops. Theodore Kagan, deputy director of the Public Affairs Division in the office of the U.S. High Commissioner for Germany and a target of the subcommittee, called them junketeering gumshoes. In November 1953, Sheen was drafted into the United States Army as a private. Cohen immediately began a campaign to obtain special privileges for Sheen. Cohen met with and made repeated telephone calls to military officials from the Secretary of the Army down to Sheen's company commander. He asked that Sheen be given a commission as well as light duties, extra leave, and no overseas assignments. At one point, Cohen was reported to have threatened to wreck the army if his demands were not met. During the Army M. C. Carthy hearings of 1954, the army charged Cohen and McCarthy with using improper pressure to influence the army, while McCarthy and Cohen countercharged that the army was holding Sheen hostage in an attempt to squelch McCarthy's investigations into communists in the army. The hearings were broadcast live using the relatively new medium of television, and were viewed by an estimated 20 million people. Just prior to the hearings, Sheen and Cohen appeared on the cover of Time on March 22, 1954, under the banner McCarthy and his men. The Army M. C. Carthy hearings absolved McCarthy of any direct wrongdoing, blaming Cohen alone. The exposure of McCarthy and his methods before a television audience, however, is widely considered to have heralded the beginning of the end of his career. Cohen resigned from McCarthy's staff shortly after the hearings. Chapter 3 – Later Years After the hearings, Sheen left politics and refused to comment on the episode for the rest of his life, so his view of his relationship with Cohen remains unknown. He remained active in the private sector as a businessman, and an entrepreneur, working in the hotel, music, and film industries. He was for a time a member of the Young President's Organization. On October 22, 1957, he married Miss Universe of 1955, Hila V. Rombin of Sweden. They had six children, including Frederick Bernd Sheen, 
and were married for nearly 40 years until their deaths in 1996. Also in 1957, Sheen's father named him head of Sheen Enterprises, though in 1963 Sheen's father resumed his position as head of the company. In 1977, Sheen described himself as retired. Sheen made a cameo appearance as himself on a 1968 episode of Batman. Sheen was executive producer of the 1971 film The French Connection, which was nominated for eight Academy Awards and won five, including Best Picture. In 1977 he produced That's Action. Shortly afterwards, Sheen was involved with music by the DeFranco family that achieved Billboard Gold and Platinum and Cashbox No. 1. Sheen's company, Sheen Music, also provided songs to Lou Rawls and Bobby Sherman, among others. A musician himself, Sheen had music he composed published. He once conducted the Boston Pops Orchestra in place of Arthur Fiedler at a concert celebrating his Harvard University 25th reunion in a performance of Sibelius Karelia Suite. Some of the musicians refused to play for him, and one commented later, that man ruined my father's life. No way I was going to play for him. Sheen's post-production video house in Hollywood, Studio Television Services, handled clients such as HBO, Disney, Orion, and MGM slash UA. His publicly traded research and development company, High Resolution Sciences, endeavored for years to bring high definition to broadcast television. Chapter 4, Death. Sheen died on June 19, 1996, at the age of 68, in a private airplane accident in Burbank, California. Also dying in the crash were his wife, Gila V., and their 35-year-old son, Bernd, who was piloting the plane. They were buried at Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery in Los Angeles. Chapter 5, Legacy A documentary film, Point of Order, was edited by Emile de Antonio from the Kinescope recordings of the Army MC Carthy hearings. Following Sheen's death, playwright Tony Kushner, who previously wrote the Pulitzer Prize-winning Angels in America, wrote a one-act play titled G. David Sheen in Hell. The play takes place on the day Sheen died and portrays Sheen as he arrives in Hell and is reunited with Roy Cohen, Richard Nixon, Whitaker Chambers, and J. Edgar Hoover. In the 1992 HBO film Citizen Cohen, Sheen is portrayed by Jeffrey Nordling. In the 2012 comic novel Nick and Jake by Tad Richards and Jonathan Richards, Sheen is presented as a boyish innocent who accompanies Roy Cohen to Paris.